did the fastest lap of the race. Okay, welcome to part three of episode four. Uh, we're just doing the closing stages of the race now. It's lap 13, uh, catching Hamilton and Button. Uh, Vettel's still quite close behind me, uh, keeping me in check, making sure that I don't slack off and I keep on the pace. Now, at the moment, uh, this race has been a bit hectic and all over the place, and hopefully Malaysia will be a bit more in a bit calmer because I, d I don't like that race at all but I've not really actually run it in race conditions only in practice and I don't like it but I can, ima I can imagine myself spinning off a bit more there and getting a slightly more realistic result um, then I think after that one it's China uh, I've not really had much of a go on that track yet as I get another warning for cutting the corner I've got loads of those on this track because it's so easy to cut the corners on this. Whereas Malaysia, you, you can seem to like cut the corners quite heavily and get away without the warnings. I think it's just because you've got so many quite open chicanes and squared off corners on this track that you can just cut it. And this is one of my favourite tracks, though. I mean, I love it. Um, and then there were some rumours that uh, Formula One might lose Melbourne as a venue, but. Eccleston saying how important it is and other people are saying it's quite important um, I, I actually moved over to the side of the track there to get back into the uh, wet area of the track to cool my tyres I'm not sure whether that actually has much of an effect to be honest uh, maybe it'd help if I didn't run wide like that but you could definitely see a dry lines appearing here or maybe not a dry line, just a slightly less wet line. Uh, I think my race engineer recommended, or recommends soon, that I pit in and get intermediate. Uh, that would be incredibly stupid considering there's only a few laps to go and I don't actually have to change tyres in this race because it's a wet race, so you can just stick with the full wets for the whole thing. You can tell the the full wets just by the green stripe around the uh, inside of the tire, around the groove. Uh, with the new Pirellis you've got a colouring system which is a little bit confusing at times but I think it looks better because you don't have these stupid green stripes around it. Uh, so I think it's an improvement, it might make life a bit harder for the commentators but at the end of the day it doesn't take too long to work out who's on what tyres and it's something to talk about uh, which is probably Pirelli's aim because one of the biggest problems I remember when they switched to a single make tyre manufacturer was that the tyre manufacturers weren't that interested in it mainly because they didn't get mentioned very much uh, you used to have this all this talk about the Michelin runners versus, versus the Bridgestone running teams and how each tyre had different strengths and works better on different tracks of course when that went away you didn't have that so no one was talking about the tyres very much so that's where Pirelli have been fairly clever where everyone's talking about the tyres uh, poor old Perez who's lost his great uh, finish in his first ever F1 race due to them being disqualified actually managed to make the tyres last forever basically he only did one stop which I, I still find amazing but I, I like tyres I mean I, I like all the aspects of racing but the tyres are the important bit they're the bit that make contact with the road and they're the most like if you actually get into the physics involved in it and the d different things like you've got different levels of grip so you've got like um physical grip from the friction and then you've got a chemical heat uh, grip which is at a kind of like molecular level uh, and just to interrupt me being incredibly boring I have now passed Hamilton and gone into second place and I'm, I'm properly on a charge now you can see I'm moving over here to tr just to try and cool my tyres a little bit I know I'm not going to burn them up before the end of the race, it won't be a huge problem, but I just want to make sure. If this was a full 100% race distance and I had traction control and ABS turned off, 
then I'd probably be calling these tyres like mad and looking after them, but I'm not, so I'm just bombing it now. Now, I reckon I at this point I was thinking I can actually catch Button here because I took so much time out of Hamilton in that those couple of laps and in Button like it's five seconds the gap at the moment in that last split my tyres just starting to get worn now and I'll check at the next split time what the time actually is um, I think I catch him basically by the end of this lap but then it gets a little bit bizarre and you will see what I'm talking about when I'm saying that the AI systems seem a bit broken and incomplete so you go that I knocked off like I don't know like five something seconds still but that doesn't actually really translate to what we've got on track here that doesn't really look like five seconds to me when I close in and then he decides uh, now would be a good time to change to intermediate tyres and all of the AI basically pit in and change their tyres with one lap to go uh, I was looking forward to a nice big showdown here because I thought I could catch him on the last lap and maybe do a last corner lunge and it would be really interesting but instead a broken AI system where it's got to the point where you would change tyres normally that's all that they know the AI they know that now is the time for intermediates they're not thinking oh it's got one lap to go in the race because they've obviously programmed the AI to perform in a certain function over a hundred percent race distance and then not scale them down for the the shorter distances so they're still thinking right I'll pit when the track changes in this certain weather rather than thinking sod it I've got one lap to go and what's the worst that can happen to my tyres in that length of time so that kind of threw me for the rest of this lap and I'm excited because I'm going to win but like I, you see all these mistakes creeping in because I'm I keep checking to make sure that my capture card isn't freezing I think I'll do it um, in a minute I took a full on like glance over my shoulder at my computer here I'm like is it working is it recording and I look back and I'm like off the track I'm like shit I better not actually crash and ditch all of this and I was like again ran wide there I was extra careful to make sure I didn't spin but I, I'm gonna win uh, mainly because the AI being idiots I could have done it but who knows but there we go that's uh my first win for Lotus and my race engineer goes batshit crazy Congratulations mate! That's a fantastic win! Simply fantastic! Hey! Nobody expected that result! Nobody did expect that result uh, and he went completely bonkers after that I got an achievement, top step of the podium um, it's basically for your first win in the career mode um, uh, I'll just leave you with the uh, interview bit uh, then we'll just basically call it quits on the episode so I hope you enjoyed it look forward to Malaysia on the next one hopefully uh, in the next week I'll have that out uh, subscribe to pretend gamers please uh, if you like the videos so you can keep track of them also uh, subscribe to my channel which is Messers Law uh, for like smaller videos like qualifying uh, some of the minor cr crashes I have uh, also stay tuned for my new Shift 2 series which will be coming on Friday when Shift is out alright thank you very much and uh, see you later Congratulations, this must be a very special moment for you today with your first victory in Formula One. You've got to be feeling good about taking a victory in your first season in Formula One. Taking a victory in your first season must put you in a strong position within the team. Are you hoping your attempt to assert yourself is recognised sooner rather than later? Hey, 
I've got to tell you, the team were really impressed with how you handled the press earlier. They said to say thank you. <laughs>